Hey everyone, I'm Clive. Hey, and I'm Louis. Thanks for joining. And today we're going to talk about some BIM best practices and namely about how to manage your project templates. The three things that we'll cover, the first one is challenges. So the challenges associated with creating, managing, updating templates. The second is best practices in order to help with that workflow. And then we'll reveal some answers uh, to those tough questions that we generally have in these best practice sessions. Right, right. Yeah. So, so let's get, let's get cracking. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone has templates, right, Clive? I mean, I have templates. You have some templates, don't you? Sure, sure. I, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, some, somewhere. You, you have templates, so you must use them, right? Um, when you say use them, what, what exactly do you mean? Like may, maybe maybe not really. No, it's Oops. kind of like um, some no? sometimes. So, so you don't you have templates, but you don't quite use them always. Uh, no, not always, and and that's really due to the. I just I just sometimes feel like I can't trust them. <laughs> and why do you think that is what what makes you not trust them well they're outdated a lot of the time they're outdated a lot of the time it takes a long time for them to be updated so mm -hmm. generally i kind of i feel like i'm not using the latest information yeah i've, I've heard that before and um why do you think that is not for for you for you and your workflow well it, it generally is when we provide feedback there's there's barriers to incorporating it or there's just mm -hmm. barriers in general to to making sure that things are up to date lots of standards around the world and lots of different ways of doing things so um, it's a challenge we know it's a challenge and how is that feedback um loop within the, the your company what what's that process like it, it's a pretty manual process we've got a lessons learned template that we share and when we fill this out it's a very manual form and we send that back we send that back to somebody so you know you you don't have those those feedback loops coming through but you have this document what what happens to the document uh i, I i'm not not sure really because there's there's one person or a couple of people that are responsible for the update so may, maybe their desk looks like this i don't know yeah and yeah, maybe so it kind of tends to bottleneck on somebody so they must they must be on vacation somewhere. <laughs> Did you just uh, have it came back? <laughs> no, no, that's so that's Jen. Jen's awesome. She's she's on site and she's working on projects. Unfortunately, you know, people who manage our templates, they've got a day job as well. It's not their full time gig. So it takes time. Yeah, yeah, I can I can understand that. So so you know, if you can't wait for those updates on a new project, obviously, uh, what do you do when a new when a new project comes up? Oh that, that that's simple. We just we copy from a previous project and we paste and therefore, you know, we've got our new new starting point. It's great. What's wrong with that? Well, you do that and other people do that. What what happens then? Yeah, you you do have a good point. We um, we end up with many, many templates. Uh, everyone has their own. So many different formats, really tough to manage. And uh, yeah, you've got a good it's, point. This definitely sounds a bit risky to start every project differently. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so there are, we <laughs> apologize, we're not very good actors, but <laughs> there are lots of challenges in that workflow, ranging from uh, the fact that this is all overhead. Most of the time, you know, without a system in place, people have to do this and they have a day job and it's not billable work. It's not something, you know, you don't bill a client for managing your templates and improving your workflows. Yeah, we've, we've covered just a few of the challenges and um, kind of combined many of the conversations we've had into one, um, but there's many other challenges that teams experience with building and updating and starting a, a template. And that's what we want to focus on today is some best practices on how we can improve a template workflow uh, for BIM execution planning or the BIM management work to improve your BIM management workflow. Yep. Let's talk some best practices and dig into uh, into some software to to demo, shall we? Yeah. Let's let's show those best practices using the platform today. Ah. <laughs> so one of the things uh, that you would be doing would be managing templates, managing standards inside of a project. And if we were to simply create our first, uh, I'm going to call this my plan template 
And now we can simply create a template as an administrator that we can provide access to others for. I'm gonna go instantly into the plan. And I'm gonna, first of all, look at how we can use industry standard templates to start with. Some templates that are out there, for example, the level of accuracy specification and being able to find certain things that maybe are interesting for you to use on your project. Mm -hmm. For example, the squared approach. That's something that I don't want to have to recreate as a company. I want to use the industry standard approach to uh, essentially calculating or following a rule or a guideline or a method. Yeah, if and you're a team, yeah, I'm sorry. If, if you're a team looking to create new templates, there's a lot of information out there. There's information, um, industry standards that are really great guidelines to help you get started. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to use the entire document. So picking and choosing what information may be applicable to your company or to your workflow is, is kind of the first best practice we want to share with you today. And the key to this is instead of having to copy a whole project, we can start taking pieces of that project. Right. So for this one, the ISO principles, this is draw.io and being able to create these diagrams in other tools. There's another one here, uh, which is quite nice, uh, whimsical. It's able to very quickly and easily create these documents and then also create whether it's an embed code, which you can embed directly into your standard and it will always stay live, or we can create an image for the selection only and then go back to our standard and simply either paste that image in and or um, add it by dragging and dropping from your downloaded file. And then as you go through building your templates, you can use the commenting and approval process to know what you're setting live. So in this example, I'm going to directly move straight to a published status for our principles. So this diagram will be available when we set our template live, but we're still going to work on this squared approach. So this is something that we're still going to have conversations about, and it's not going to be available for the end users. And we'll see that as we introduce uh, Michelle in her workflow and starting to adopt this. So as a template manager, I'm going to go to my templates, set this one live. You'll see the live symbol that goes on the screen, on, on that template. And then as a user, as an end user, I'm switching to Michelle's environment. She does not have access directly to these. So she's gonna create a project. And when she creates a project and goes to the plan, going and using templates from our library now, we will now have access to my plan template. And as we saw, when we created the, the plan sections in our library and our template, we had two sections inside of that standards group, but we only set one of these live. And now as Michelle, I can simply drag and drop that into my project and start using this content directly from our standards team. So there's a link from the, the guidelines to the standards team within our company to the end user that is using this in a project on a daily basis. Yeah, and one thing I, I want to mention here is making sure that teams have quick access and, and access to approved content, not, not content that might be incomplete or in progress, but having access to items that have been approved or have gone through the workflow and are ready to be used again and again on each project or have been improved along the way. So that's another best practice we'd like to share is making sure that those that content is reusable and has been uh, approved by certain team members. Yep, and so I'm going to also, my scope template, I'm going to create a specific to scope, a template in our library, and I'm going to go to the scope, and I'm simply, and I'm simply going to now start building a scope from the library, either, I should mention again, industry standards, whether they are uniform at uniclass, omniclass, be, being able to use all of the standards out of the box, but also being able to define from this library. Yeah, and, and I think one, one thing I'd like to add on classifications is 
they're really great. They're really great to organize, um, especially because they have these codes that are consistent from project to project, but making sure that there is a customer for those classifications. They're, they're not always structured in a way where they're going to be used by your modeling teams all the time. They're kind of more dedicated for estimators and teams in construction or for quantity sometimes. So making sure that there is a customer for those classifications, uh, uh, an end user. Um, if not, the best, the best um, scopes that we've seen that have been pretty successful are always the simple ones. Um, keeping them by discipline, so creating a structural folder and putting structural content. We could be following, if we were in a scope, a certain specific LOD standard, or if we're not following an LOD standard, or we're following the new level of information need, we would choose none in our project standard for our scope. And then our teams would be able to use the geometry information, um, reliability, documentation, accuracy, information data, et cetera, et cetera, all of the ways that you would need to define those requirements. So in this example, let's simply add a, a couple of these in here. I'm going to define what we need for coordination. And part of the best practices here that we've learned is keeping a simple scope for the, the BIM uses that your team provides. So some teams might consider them as services. Um, if we do 3D coordination and we have a typical handover um, delivery milestone, that is something that we would include in our, um, our BIM uses here as, as Cloud created. If we don't do any structural analysis or AR, VR, we shouldn't be putting information like that in our milestones. These are what we would say, keep it lean as possible so that they're, they're, you don't end up with too many tasks that or over modeling um, on a project. So here it's about keeping it lean, keeping it to um, a list of tasks that you can provide and can serve for the project. And um, do this, I don't know whether, uh, and this. So the checklists um, adding in here, just I, I saw a question that popped up about that and maybe um, we can answer more in detail. Th this set of information that we have just created very quickly for our template, we are going to then set that template live as well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go to Michelle's project and go to the scope for Michelle's project. And simply by accessing that template, my scope template, and choosing which milestones I would like to import. And then whether I do or do not want to import all of those checklists and teams that I had assigned, and then simply by dragging and dropping, when I drag the, the concrete stairs in, you can see how this is populating and creating us our content inside of our project. So that, that's the two loops of creating templates for planning and scoping and reusing that content. But one of the major parts of the workflow would then be to have teams to help develop the standards. And Louis here, Louis, one of the people working on this project, and simply by adding Louis, I'm gonna go back to our templates, simply by going to our plan template, and as the administrator, I can add Louis, <laughs> Louis at Planoly, and I'm going to add Louis as an editor to this template, and I'm going to go to the scope template and do the same thing. I'm gonna add Louis as an editor. Yeah, so as Clive's adding me, I can, I am now a reviewer. So as I'm using this, uh, you know, I noticed that in our template, we didn't have certain information or require certain information to our, um, some of the elements. So I'm gonna now leave a comment here for Clive. So I, I see this comment come up in my activity feed and I can then click on this item. It pulls it up, shows what he's talking about. Louis asking for a uh, concrete finish. So maybe that's an information requirement uh, that we need to add. He's talked about for, um, so concrete finish per certain standards. And this becomes now part of our standard. So that workflow of having a team that are connected to projects, providing daily feedback if they want to on your standards, and then being able to incorporate that inside of the same framework means that your standards will always stay up to date. So that's just one example of how 
we would first of all create a template have a team that manages that template provides feedback and starts to incorporate things like an information requirement that the owner might want at handover for something on a project and you can then start evolving your standards and the same thing for the planning and whether it's BIM execution planning or your contract document or your terms and conditions all of that would be rolled into your standards and and providing feedback to that team directly yeah and that workflow that we just experienced was someone like me just providing the feedback but Clive would have been able to just make that update right away going accessing the template making that update and now it's live ready for the next project and does not have to wait for the next version which could be six months from now but we might have a project starting tomorrow so we're always continuously updating so part of the best pra practice is here yeah and having a strategic workflow so as a as a company being able to understand in industry guidelines be able to use those in your standards directly be able to use those in your projects and your contracts directly but also have a feedback loop into and even on your projects back into your standards for your company to improve and also having this opportunity to connect feedback directly into industry guidelines and standards bodies and that's one of the things actually in a, in a complete advert but it's free for standards bodies to develop and to house their standards on the platform so it's something that we offer and uh, that was one example of the level of accuracy specifications uh, also other BIM execution planning frameworks that are free to use and free for the standards teams as well having that common framework helps teams to essentially share and use and then feedback in a continuously improving loop mm -hmm. it's it's uh it's much easier than sending an email with comments or a pdf that's uh, marked up with certain information certain requirements that need changing yeah especially if that pdf you then have to copy and then reformat for that document so as that that common framework certainly helps with that updating workflow yep uh, bring in the right team members so that you have the the right feedback um, it's not everyone all of the time that wants to be involved in that standards workflow being able to shorten so the combination of the right team members and also the right framework for collecting that feedback can really shorten the feedback cycle and the feedback loops what we just showed was an end user providing feedback to the standards team that would be able to make a modification to the standards and in a controlled way so that the team uh, that's managing the standards can also comment and make agreement before they include it and go through smaller sprints in a much more agile workflow to managing those standards mm -hmm. overall what happens as you have a standards framework with templates that people can continuously provide feedback on and improve together that builds trust and and therefore people will actually start using the output rather than copying and pasting from their own um, formulated standards so in conclusion we know that starting with templates can really save time uh, but it's a significant uh, burden on teams to manage them and lots of challenges a common framework can really help that so if you can uh, not go from between 10 different pieces of software to manage that workflow it really can help mitigate some of these and then involving team members making sure that they have rapid feedback cycle that is a, cl a closed loop so it's not lost um, on somebody's desk or in somebody's to-do list it's captured in that same framework can really build trust in the system and therefore people will start to use and reduce the waste in that workflow yeah you can now take that vacation and uh, not worry about that feedback not getting through we can have someone else update it <laughs> there you go and the the result ha happier teams you know better quality on the output for, so from a contract perspective being able to continue to improve your standards and then feed that through into your projects yeah it results in a higher quality and less time consuming process that generates hopefully more smiles on your both BIM and project teams, team spaces. Yeah, every team gets a little happier when they, they're, they're getting heard on their feedback and not just getting lost. So we've got a couple of things to help. Um, the first one is the demos, just understanding the basics of using Planoly. If that's something you're interested in, it's just forward slash demo. And there's a few videos and continually building library there. But the other one that has been incredibly popular has been the masterclass and that's a dedicated set of four very quick sessions for your company to get started using and everything from the templates through to managing that workflow 
verifying the outputs on your projects. 